This video is being re-uploaded courtesy of Coffee with Comet. Link to his channel below. I hope you enjoy. Well, I don't know. I have this rule, see? I only go to a movie if it satisfies three basic requirements. One, it has to have at least two women in it. Who? Two? Talk to each other about three? Something besides a man. Pretty strict, but a good idea. No kidding. Last movie I was able to see was Alien. Yo, bromandos. Oh, excuse me. Evening, patriots. Nah, screw it. Yo. Bromatriots, my name is B.A. Thompsonator, and I'll be filling in for Coffee with Common today as he celebrates a holiday with his family. Today we're going to be talking about feminism. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if I reach the higher branches of the fruit tree in this life, it's uh, probably because I climbed a ladder. See, here's the thing. I'm what you might call somewhat of a movie guy. However, I typically review older badass films made for men because what Hollywood makes nowadays makes me want to, you know, use a trench spike for a Q-tip. But before I go and perforate my eardrums to drown out all the noise, something I've had to hear a lot of from the entertainment media is, is something called this Bechdel test. What is the Bechdel test? Well, the Bechdel test, or also known as a Bechdel-Wallace test, is used by the media and academics as some sort of cultural barometer to determine gender equality in works of fiction. But how does it do that, you might ask? Well, for a piece of fiction, namely a movie, to pass the test, it has to meet three really important points of criteria. One, it must have two women in it. Two, they have to talk to each other. And three, the conversation has to be about something besides a man. Wow. Let me tell you, that is some bulletproof criteria. I can really tell a lot of thought went into those. In fact, just to show you how thorough of a test that is, we're going to try a little experiment. I'm going to see if this, if this YouTube video right here that I'm making can pass the Bechdel Wallace test here on the spot. You ready? Here goes! Tommy Wiseau's The Conversation. Oh hi Lisa, oh hi Susie. Wow gee, lovely weather, right? Yeah sure is, Bechdel approved. Well, that was easy. But in all fairness, as it turns out, the creator of the test, Alison Bechdel, intentionally set the bar low to see how many movies would still fail. And wouldn't you know it, most of them actually don't. Not according to the site BechdelTest.com anyway, which says out of the 7,511 movies listed in their database, only about 10% fail to pass any of Bechdel's criteria. But that's the whole database, bro. I mean, what about now? Well, taking a look at the main page, you can see a list of movies from 2017. Lo and behold, most of them still pass, as did the last five movies most recently added to the site. Huh. So far, not really seeing a lot of gender inequality. But maybe that's because the bar is too low. I mean, I got a little curious how low it could go. So I posed a couple questions on Twitter to see what the response might be. Does two housewives discussing their favorite kitchen accessories pass the Bechdel test? I'm curious how the Bechdel test handles situations with LGBTQRZ characters. Would two transgender women discussing the lengths of their Johnsons pass the test? And wouldn't you know it, according to Twitter, both situations pass. So perhaps then, the Bechdel test shouldn't be treated as a litmus test for determining how a feminist a movie is. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, if women on screen are talking to each other. Uh, surely we can do better. Well, how about a sexy lamp test, which says, if you can replace your female character with a sexy lamp and the story still basically works, then maybe you need another draft. Well, um, I don't, I don't know about that one, see. See, I'm not actually attracted to lamps. I think that one's reaching a little bit. How about instead a Mako Mori test, which asks if a female character has a character arc that doesn't support a man. Well, I'm not sure how that would work either. See, if they're both protagonists, Technically, they'd be supporting each other towards the same goal, but you know, I like where this one is going. I, you know, we're thinking about a character's potential arc as opposed to a generic superficial trait, like whether or not they have a penis. Yes, the numerous failings of the Bechdel test have been acknowledged by feminists far and wide as 
film critic Kyle Smith of the National Review discovered when he dared to criticize the test, only to receive major backlash to be followed by major backpedaling when he stood his ground. Yes, the Bechtel test is flawed, which is why according to Nate Silver's polling statistical analysis website, 538, we need a new one. And not just one, potentially 12 of them. Still, 30 years, we're not exactly sitting on a superior answer for measuring the movie industry's gender imbalance. What does the next Bechtel test look like? The time is right for a successor. Is there a short, punchy test we can apply? One that if movies start passing it would indicate that the industry is actually becoming better for both the women who make movies and the people who watch them? Is there a new test that could pull the modern film business in the right direction? And if there is, where on earth do we find it? Here's where we started. We reached out to more than a dozen women in film and television, writers, directors, actresses, and producers to ask what they think the next Bechtel test should be. The answers we got ran the gamut. Some addressed representation behind the camera. Others zeroed in on the problems faced by women of color. Still others concentrated on characterization and story. How women are represented on screen. In the end, we boiled the responses down into 11 tests from our film industry sources, plus one from our staffers. We then used the numbers database to identify the top 50 grossing films of the domestic box office in 2016 and ran them through all our new tests. We split the 50 movies between 9 538 staffers who watched each film with a clipboard, keeping track of all the things that our 12 tests were interested in. Every film was scored by two staffers, and any discrepancy in scoring were debated until we reached a consensus. Hollywood does decently according to some tests, and absolutely abhorrently according to others. Similarly, some films get okay marks, Bad Moms, Hidden Figures, and Independence Day Resurgence passed at least half of the 12 new tests. Others did not. The Secret Life of Pets, Deadpool, Doctor Strange, and Rogue One each passed only one test. All told, it's clear after this exercise that Hollywood is failing an entire gender on several fronts. No, what's clear is that you've created 12 arbitrary new tests that women in the entertainment business, we don't know how many, think can be used to measure gender bias against females. And you know what? Maybe, maybe they're right. I mean, if Hollywood is ran by guys like Harvey Weinstein, then maybe there is an inherent gender bias within its system. But again, we don't know how widespread that is, and it doesn't really relate to the goal of this study or the original Bechtel test, which is to prove gender bias against females both on screen and off. As you freely admit, In your article, some films pass your tests with flying colors, while others fail abhorrently. Well, gee, I mean, maybe we shouldn't be so quick then to throw out the old test, seeing as its simplicity made it easier to clarify if something passed or not. Except not really. No, it fails pretty hard too, and if you want to check out some truly autistic bullshit, I'd recommend looking up whether or not the film Alien passes the Bechdel test, because some of the conversations you may find to be truly magical. But that's all besides the point though, because 538, good old Nate Silver's site in Shining Armor, has got the proof that Hollywood is excluding women in one form or another in another article that begins like this. Audiences and creators know that on one level or another, there's an inherent gender bias in the movie industry. No, actually I don't know that. I know that you have a bias which assumes that. Whether it's the disproportionately low number of films with female leads, the process of pigeonholing actresses into predefined roles, um, it's called typecasting. It happens to all actors of all genders, of all ages, of all races. Or the lack of serious character development for women on screen compared to their male counterparts. Oh yes, Women never get good roles. No movies have ever been written for women. That's why all women on film are just sexy secretaries. Oh, you know, except for, you know, all the famous actresses from the black and white or Technicolor era. You know, Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz, just to name one. What's challenging is quantifying this dysfunction, putting numbers to a trend that is, at least anecdotally, a pretty clear reality. I can't believe it. I I really can't 
believe it. Feminists. Far-left liberal film critics. Nate Silver, apparently. He's been demoted further, you occult peon. Now you're Nate Metaconglomerate Dust, or something along those lines. Nate Metaconglomerate Dust, indeed. You people haven't learned anything, have you? You're still trying to treat people as if they were some sort of bugs that exist in a hive mind. That everyone belongs to a collective, thinks like a collective that is determined, in this case, by their gender. Well, they don't. None of these tests account for the choices people make. None of them account for variances in demographics which may determine who you typically cast in your movie, who you typically hire for your movie. No, instead you're trying to compile data. Which, by the way, any data you compiled using anything remotely related to the Bechdel test would be flawed because it doesn't account for what kind of movies you're including. You could easily grab a thousand R-rated action movies, see that roughly 30% of them pass your diversity quota, and go raging off into the sunset about Hollywood has a problem! Well, you're right about one thing. Hollywood does have a problem. The problem is that their movies fucking suck! Hollywood is a crumbling, archaic institution that is somehow managing to cling to global domination of an industry by the edge of a knife. If and despite of all the politically correct, fucked up bullshit that comes from studios who are terrified to offend straight down to the film critics who pan movies which offend them isn't progressive enough for you, then join us in middle America. Stop supporting Hollywood in its endeavors. Stop buying tickets to films that fail your stupid test. Simply let it die. Look. Movies don't go away when the major movie studios go under. They simply get better because they'll be made outside of an inept, wasteful, strangled corporate environment that is seeking to control the world's box office by creating boring shit that appeals to everyone on basic levels. Let it die. If you're unhappy with culture, then go make culture. What are you waiting for? Go make the alternative that you think needs to exist instead of trying to manipulate the outcome of the one we already have. You see? When people accuse feminists of being cultural Marxists, they're thinking of things like this exact situation right here. But you know what pisses me off the most about the Bechdel test? The one super obvious point that none of the media outlets who praise it ever bring up, it's this. A movie cannot be sexist. It is a movie. It is a work of fiction. It is not real. If a movie fails to pass the Bechdel test, well, maybe it's because it was never meant to pass it in the fucking first place. Anyway, thanks for watching, bro Matriots. Huge thanks also to Coffee for allowing me to fill in and almost failing to get this to him on time. Once again, I'm Thompsonator. I'll see you all again soon for more action, but until then, have a good day. Making America great again.